given us a beautiful morning, say amen. amen. Part, of, part of his heart and will for us as his people is over and over again in our lives because he knows us intimately and intricately. Part of his will and his purpose in our lives is to remind us over and over again by the work of his hand, the painting that he is doing, that he is, he is a God who has loved us and will continue to love us in wonderful and miraculous ways. Some of what he does is consternating and confounding to us. I'll be the first one to say that, but most of the time in our lives, as people of the kingdom, the hand and heart of God in our living is, is one that is open and willing and, and refreshing for us. And so we come to a beautiful July morning like this. God has just opened his hand and his heart and said, I want you to know I love you. And I'm going to show you in a way that you can see and touch and smell and taste. You stepped out this morning, did you notice? Almost no humidity. We're in Kentucky. How about that? It's God just, it's God just giving into our lives. Which brings me to this. The epistle lesson for this morning is, outside of the Gospels, probably my favorite chapter in all of Scripture. This, this recounting by the power of the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, this wondrous gift, this wonder of God's love for His people, for His creation. Think of this this morning, loved ones. The Father's love for you and me has existed in His hand, in His heart, in His will from eternity. Before anything was ever created, before He ever spoke and it came to be, already with the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Father's love for you and me, personal and powerful, was already not only in existence, but actively working. That love in, in your life and mine, Paul reminds us, that love flows through the whole history of our lives. Through us coming from our mama's womb and growing up and becoming people of the kingdom and living lives that are filled with all kinds of verities and vagaries. You and I have this in our lives, that this love, this love the Father has for us from eternity. He is expressing over and over again in our lives as His chosen children in time. He will express it for us through Jesus all the way to eternity. It's a love, it's a love Paul reminds us that never changes. It is deep and strong and wide and constant and certain and powerful. That in every place, in every way, whatever you and I are up against or facing, God's love for us stays strong and certain. So this morning as we come to the front of what Paul is given by the power of the Holy Spirit, the front of it is really striking for us as Christians and also instructive for our hearts. It is, this, it is this remarkable question. Paul poses it for us in, in really clear and unambiguous terms. This is what it sounds like. Listen, if God is for us, who can be against us? We'll hear that word this morning. Listen with your heart. If God is for us, who can be against us? Well, this is the answer the Bible gives to Christians. Listen, the evil one can and is. Sometimes in the course of our ordinary, regular, everyday lives out in the world, because we are just people, we can kind of, in some ways, lose track of this reality. It can become kind of the TV or the movie version, this idea that there is a Satan, a devil, that, that can become for us out in the world something that seems distant and historical and, and strange and odd, but not personal or close. Yet the question the scripture asks this morning for us, this remarkable question, brings it back home to us. If God is for us, who can be against us? The Bible says Satan is. He can be and he most certainly is. You know, it's one of the blessings of God's word as he calls us together as his children on any given Sunday morning that part of what he's speaking to us is this reminder, the evil one is real. He's not a cartoon character, he's not a, a, a movie character, he's not something out of some storybook. Satan is real, and he's not only real, listen loved ones, he's not only real, he is really present in the lives of every child of the kingdom. Satan is working, he is against everything that is holy and righteous. And so in your life and mine. Sometimes it is so important for us to be reminded, wait a minute here. 
If God is for us, who can be against us? Well, there is one who is working every single day in your life and mine as children of the kingdom to disrupt and destroy, to discourage, to, to take havoc into this relationship we have with Jesus, to make sure that we're not hearing the blessings of God or the goodness of God or the love of God. And I'll remind you this morning, he works in remarkably subtle ways. <laughs> Satan doesn't take out billboards. Instead, if there is a loose string, just a loose thread in your life and mine, where we are vulnerable to the unholy, he will pull at that string. He will poke at it. He will go after you and me over and over and over again. Lest we forget God is for us. Who can be against us? Well, this evil one who has every evil intent for every child of the kingdom. Not only that, listen this morning. Who is for us? Well, God is. Who is against us? The forces of the world that you and I live in. This is probably so much more obvious for us and still needs to be said. We live in a broken, fallen, sin-filled world. I hope you know that. And this world that is broken and sin-filled is absolutely against the God who created it, everything holy about Him, and everything about His people that belongs to Him. So we hear over and over again as Christians how much the culture, the society that we are part of shouts at us that we, we need to be quiet about our faith, we need to be, be people who can have faith as long as we leave it out of the public square. We can be people who have faith as long as we're not vocal about it. We can be people who have faith as long as we're not trying to recruit other people to the faith. Our world, listen, our world is against us. Because it's broken and fallen and we in the blood of Jesus have become holy before the Father. And what is unholy is always against what is holy. Gosh, sometimes we get, we get so lost in the things of the world that we think this is normal or natural or just the way it is. Hear me this morning. It is so much deeper than that. Our world, the forces of this world, are against Christians because they're against the God we belong to. And let me add for you this morning, because this is so vitally important for us. Our own sinful nature is against, really against us, too. We are the blood-bought, blood-covered, forgiven, recreated, new creations in Christ, people we are. But every one of us here this morning, preacher included, also still lives with the old nature, the old Adam, the old flesh. And this old nature is absolutely in opposition to everything that is holy, everything that is righteous. So this morning, if you, you got up and you thought, I guess I'll, I guess I'll get dressed and I'll go to church, and that's a good thing. But in the back of your mind, you're thinking it's a beautiful July morning. How about if we go to breakfast? <laughs> what if we go play golf? Let's, let's read the paper. Let's go for a walk. Let's go for a bike ride. Listen, that's just one small example of this broken nature, yours and mine, fighting against what God wants for us. And sometimes winning. Walked into the office or your workplace on Monday morning, and the person that you can hardly stand that works with you, that you do your very best as a Christian to put up with and be kind to, all of a sudden says something and you just weren't ready to shut up, be quiet, and let it go. Oh no. The old Adam just comes creeping up and says, Hey! Sorry. Are you with me? In your life and mine, if God is for us, who can be against us? We'll know this child of the kingdom. The sinful flesh that is still part of your reality and mine is absolutely, profoundly against us because it's against the God we belong to. So today, today this is the good news. God is for us. There's no ifs about it. That is made perfectly clear for us in Jesus. We look with hearts of faith this morning to a cross that stands because God the Father sent His precious only innocent Son for you and me because He's for us. 
Jesus dies on the cross, sheds his blood in your place and mine, because God the Father is for us. He washes away our sin and makes us whole. This morning we look to the tomb full and then empty, and our hearts can rejoice because it shouts to us, God is for us. He's for us, loved ones, because through Jesus we are his children. As he's claimed us and loved us as his own. This perfect father has a perfect way of expressing and showing us over and over again, you're mine. And because you're mine. And then he fills in the blank over and over again. I'll ask you people that are sitting out there this morning who are parents. Who have little ones or big ones in your life because God gave them to you. Let us ask you, are you for your children? Say yes if you are. I mean, do you care about them deeply and passionately? Would you, Brad, would you give your life for your children? You would, wouldn't you? Do we watch over them and love them and care for them and protect them and provide for them because we're for them? Well, say amen. amen. Then hear this, this perfect father, so much more perfect than we are. He's for us because we are his children. I want you to hear this morning, loved ones, he is for us all the way to eternity. Whatever the journey holds, whatever you and I encounter, whatever the shape or the contour or the path that you and I will experience or are experiencing, whatever lies in front of us, whatever we're up against, whatever we're dealing with, whatever we're going through, God's for us. He's not going to quit on us in Jesus, no matter what. Remember where we started? He has loved you and me from eternity. He will love us through Jesus into eternity, and at every step along the way, He will be providing and protecting and watching over and making sure that we continue to belong to Him. God is for us. In fact, because we know that, loved ones, we can live with this certainty in our lives. Listen to it. He will stand with us in every circumstance. No matter where you and I find ourselves as his children as we journey by grace toward heaven, in every single circumstance, the ones that are big to us, that may be small to those around us, the ones that challenge our weight and our ability and our intellect and our strength, the ones that will stretch us out, this God, this kind God, who has claimed us as his own in Jesus, loves us this much, he will stand with us in every circumstance. I know that there's times in our lives, I look at some of your faces this morning, there's times in our lives when as Christians we know that intellectually to be true, and yet emotionally we struggle. Sometimes we get to the place in our lives when because we're afraid or because we can't understand or because the unknown is shaking before us, we'll think, I know God's for me. I know he's with me in this. I know he stands with me, but I don't necessarily feel that. I want you to hear this morning. It's not, it's not that we feel it. It's that he, listen, he promises it. So when do we feel it and when we don't? He is absolutely faithful. God is for us, will stand with us, loved ones, in the face of all opposition. Remember we talked about Satan earlier. Well, now hear the rest of the story. For every place in your life and mine as children of the kingdom where the evil one comes to attack, to destroy, to discourage, to turn us away, this kind Savior, the one sent by the Father for us, is abiding with us as God's children. Not only abiding with us, but fighting for us. Where Satan is pulling a thread, Jesus is knitting. Where Satan's poking a wound, Jesus is healing. Where Satan's trying to turn our faces away, Jesus takes our little faces in his hands and turns us right back. And when the world is pressing in on us, pushing in on us, 
shoving in on us because it's against us as God's people, this kind and gracious and good Savior. He's with us, standing strong with us. And when our own sinful nature comes and tries to twist things around and work against what is holy in our lives, this Jesus, by his blood, this standing with us, forgiving over and over and over again, healing over and over and over again. He stands with us. You know, it's a remarkable question. If God is for us, well, we hear this morning from his holy word that this is the good news. God is for us. Our Savior is proof that is true in your life and mine. It's the best news we will ever hear on this Sunday morning. This is the teaching of the Lord. If you would rise, please.